Yo, the time is now for us to be about what we sing about, what we preach about, what we read about. Yeah. Y'all ready? Let's go. Come on. We got to cry love and spend We thank you, Lord, for being in your house. We enter your gates with thanksgiving. And we enter your courts with praise. And we say, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we'll be glad in it. We thank you that the devil is defeated. We thank you. Got the shine of light so the world can see that our God is all we need. The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. So we can be here as only what we gotta be doers too. Judges, it's good for you to investigate the life of Joseph or Abraham or Moses or any of the Old Testament patriarchs or the heroes of past times. And what you will recognize is that they serve the same God that said, Come unto me, all ye that labor. And are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. But then how do you reconcile the fact that we that have come to, to God, to Jesus Christ, and we came because we were heavy laden, we came because we were burdened, we came because we needed rest. How do we reconcile that sometimes things go wrong. There, there, there's a, a movie that came out years ago by Tyler Perry. And the question was, why did I get married? <laughs> I don't even want to know who honked that horn. <laughs> uh, and, and the movie was, why, why did I get married? And, and the question was asked, why? Because the marriage was going sideways. If, if I'd have known, and, and some of you were, were honest, you get in a little secret closet and say, if I'd have known that I was going to have this kind of issue, I'd never got married. Because sometimes we expect when we make a decision of a lifetime that everything is going to be fine. So when the Lord says, come to me, I'll give you rest, how come my marriage is not perfect? I'm not, I'm not resting. I'm, I'm having trouble. I, I don't even want to get up in the morning. Don't, don't want to go to bed at night. What about the economic situation? Lord, you said that I could ask and I would receive and seek and I, I would find and knock and the door would be open. What? Hey, God. What's this? I didn't sign up for unemployment when I, when I got saved. I didn't sign up for people uh, ratting on me and talking about me and bullying me. I, I, when I got saved, you said come, and I came, and now things are going sideways. Why? Why did I get saved? I got saved, I was 17, and I know why I got saved. I got saved because I didn't have any peace of mind at all. I didn't come from a bad home. My father was an evangelist. My mother was the sweetest woman on the face of the earth. They taught me, I had six wonderful sisters. 17 years old, and I just wasn't satisfied with life. Got good grades in school, had clothes to wear, food to eat, and here I am commiserating life. I enjoyed going to bed more than I did being up and awake because when I went to bed, I could dream about what life should have been. I had all these high standards. 
I didn't want to fail at anything. I didn't want to lose. If I lost at anything, it just, it was tragic. How, how could I lose? My, my brother-in-law, my late brother-in-law, Phil Harris, and we would play, play checkers. And he would always win. And that just made me mad. How come I can't win checkers? I think back on it, I was really stupid. But sometimes you do stupid things when you're not thinking rationally. And so here I am with life, things going well, and I had no peace of mind. 17 years old, my life uprooted. I was in the middle of high school in San Diego, and my dad got a uh, another job, he had to leave San Diego. We came up to Sacramento. Here I am in the middle of uh, high school. You don't know nobody, don't nobody at church. And I felt terrible. I said, well, let me try Jesus. You know, they got that song, if you tried everything, <laughs> and everything has failed. Tried Jesus. Well, that's what I did. I tried Jesus. Hey, look, I want to be saved. That was in February 1963. It's February, March, April, tearing for the Holy Ghost three times a week, sometimes four, sometimes five, nothing. And I despaired of life. And I, I told the Lord, Lord, if you don't save me, take me. Because I, I didn't want to live. But it wasn't but a few days later. He saved me. So, so hey, David, why, why did you get saved? I got saved because I needed help. And I needed help right then, quick and in a hurry. Otherwise, some things may have happened in my life. And the Lord knew that, and he said, hey, David, come. Come unto me. I'll give you rest. When, when I received the Holy Ghost, the lack of peace erased my mind, and I had joy unspeakable, full of glory. You say, hey, 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 Bishop, that's a good story. <laughs> give me a high five, Bishop. That story didn't last. It wasn't too long before I had trouble in the school I was going to. And sometimes things go sideways and upways at the same time. Had a fight on the, on the school, uh, what do they call that, uh, where they play. The, 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 anyway, and, and when we was playing, I guess we was playing football or something. And this guy hit me in my jaw. Bam. I'm trying to get saved and I'm getting ready to fight. Lord, why? I had the Holy Ghost then. So, things was going down. But at the same time, the Lord came and blessed me with a scholarship to Berkeley. And so sometimes you got to count your blessings and name them one by one. Because when you get saved... Things don't always go the way you want them to. But if you know who you came to, you know that the alternative ain't no good. Will you also go away, he asked his disciples. You know what Philip said? Hey, 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 Lord. Hey, hey Lord. Woo, woo, Lord. Where are we going to go? Who, who's going to lead us like, like you do? So sometimes when you're saved and things go wrong, you got to ask yourself, why did I get saved? Did I get saved to have my marriage go well? Did I get saved to have a good job? Did I get saved so everything could go well? Did I get saved because I didn't want nobody bothering me? Or did I get saved because I saw Jesus? Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah chapter 6, 
He said, in the day, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And one of the things we must understand when we get saved, the, 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 the trajectory and the glance of our, of our eyes should never be on stuff. Because if you look at stuff long enough, you'll get discouraged. If you look at things going on in your life, yeah, there are some good things. But what the devil wants you to do is focus on the bad things. Look, they got a new house, and look at you. Look, they, they, they got a new car, look at you. Look, they got a promotion, look at you. And I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that as far as the world is concerned, we're in the top 3% of everybody on the face of the earth. And sometimes we don't value how, how blessed we are. Because the devil wants to disturb us. He wants us to get back in this condition. Come unto me, all you that labor. Yeah, I've been laboring, Lord. Heavy laden. Yeah, Lord. Give me rest. Yeah, Lord. Oh, but, but we didn't read the next verse. He, he didn't just say, I'm going to give you rest. To just go sit out in the corner. I'll be, I'll be back after a while. You don't have to do nothing. You have to go through nothing. But look what he says. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest for your soul. Unto oh, wait a minute. The rest then is not for your external existence, but the rest is for your soul. The Bible says that in the Holy Ghost is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So as long as you have the Holy Ghost, somebody better hear me now. As long as you're saved, you have within you Righteousness, peace, and joy. Yeah, I, I love Paul because he helps us out. He helps us understand life because in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, he said, we're troubled. Yeah, us. Yes, we. The apostle. Yes, the apostle. Yeah, the one that was, you remember him, he was knocked down. He was the one that was persecuting the church. He held the, the clothes while they stoned uh, Stephen. That's the one. The one that said, I'm not a whip behind the church. That's him. The one that wrote the book of Romans and uh, Corinthians, Ephesians. Wrote to his son, Timothy. Wrote to the Thessalonians. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. And when he talked to the church at Corinth, he said, we, we're troubled. Hey, saved person. I'm talking to you, saved person. We're troubled on every side. But that's not why I came to Jesus. I came to God because I wanted some soul rest. I, I, I'm going to tell you the, the biggest thing in a moment. I'm, I'm on my way. Just touch somebody and say, he's on his way. I told him the other day that as a pastor, I have several doors to close. So when I say I'm closing, just hang tight. Yeah, he, he said, we're troubled. We are troubled on every side. But Jesus said, I'll give you rest. Wait a minute, Lord. You said I, you said I was going to have a good time. No, that's not what he said. You said I'd never have any problem. No, that's not what he said. You said I would always be proud. That's not what he said. What he said was, I'll give you rest for your soul. He said, but I'm going to put a yoke on you. Why, why, God? I want you to learn something. <laughs> How will I ever know God is good if I don't do anything that needs him? It's hard to believe a person is rich if they don't give you no money. <laughs> Bishop, are you rich? Yeah, ho, <laughs> ho. Yeah, hey, how much money you got? I'm a billionaire. Where's the money? In the bank. <laughs> Woo, 
Ooh, Bishop, Pastor, I, I, my pastor is rich. <laughs> he, he, he's a billionaire. And then uh, you, you, you knock on my door, call me on the phone, say, hey, Bishop. I, 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 you know, my, my phone bill, I'm, I'm knocking on the door because I can't call you because my cell phone got cut off. And all I need is about $38.24. Because I know you got it, Bishop, because you're a billionaire. And, and I tell him, uh, come back next week. I'm going to have to check the accounts. And if everybody comes to me, and I'm never able to give them proof that I'm a billionaire, you'll finally come to a conclusion, Bishop ain't got no money. And so God knows our attitudes. He knows how we think. Come unto me. Ho, oh, oh, I'm saved. Peter said, look at the fish I caught. Uh, look, uh, get away, Jesus. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a sinful man. And he becomes one of the disciples of Lord Jesus Christ. He said, whoa, woo. And he, he looks at Peter and, 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 John, uh, Peter and James and, and the rest of them, uh, uh, James and John. He gives them a thumb up. He said, hey, <laughs> I, I, I'm an apostle. Woo, give me a high five. And then they're walking with the Lord. And they're walking over sick folk and <laughs> hungry folk and, and people that don't have no money, people that lost hope. And after a while, the disciples would say, he's a fraud. He hasn't shown me anything that he has power. And so the Lord showed the disciples I can raise the dead, I can heal the sick, I can heal paralyzed folks, get up and walk. The man at the pool of Bethesda, he got up, the woman with the issue of blood, amen, the, the, the blood was dried up, the, the, the Syrophoenician woman uh, was healed, the, 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 the man that had a son that threw himself in the fire, all those things, Jesus did that. And so the disciples, they say, hey, this this, this is God. Matter of fact, when they was on the boat, remember they was on the boat? He said, let's go to the other side. And they got in the boat, and Jesus got at the, at the helm or at the, at the bottom, at the back of the boat on the pillow and went to sleep, and, and there was a squall, a, a storm. that Y'all remember the storm came up, and, and the boat began to shake, and water was in the boat, and they thought they was going to sink, and they woke Jesus up. They said, hey, careth thou not that we perish? And the Lord got up. He said, oh, ye of little faith. And he looked at the wind and he said, shut up. Looked at the waves and said, stop. Looked at the rain and said, stop falling. And there was a great calm. And the disciples who'd been with him all that time said, whoa, who, who, who is this that could command the elements? They knew that there was something more about Jesus than just a man that could teach. Well, what I'm saying is when we come to the Lord, until you have a personal experience about how good God is, until you get a testimony, listen, if, if you've been saved for a long time and don't have a testimony, you're going to have a very fragile relationship with God because when the test comes, you will begin to wonder where is the Lord? It was Job, was it not? Job said when things got bad and, you know, thank God we don't have a, his testimony, but he said I was looking around. He said I, I, I was trying to find God. I, I looked before him, for me and he wasn't there. I looked behind me. He wasn't there. I looked on the left where he works and he wasn't there. I looked on the right and he wasn't there. But Job said he knows. See, when you're saved, even though things are going wrong, he knows. You got to know that when, when your food, amen, goes down, the pantry is empty, amen, no coffee in the coffee pot. He knows. He knows when things, amen, are going wrong and awry in your life. He knows when you're sick. He knows when you're afflicted. He knows when you're discouraged. He knows when you're disillusioned. Why? Because I came to God not because he was a man. I came to God because he was God. 
God, 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 God. God is omnipotent. He is omniscient. He is omnipresent. And God in the body of Jesus Christ said, come unto me. My Lord, my Lord. You, you think in the 57 years that I've been saved, things have not gone awry? You think I'm up here because things have been smooth for the last five decades and a few years? No, 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 no. The reason I'm here is that when the storm came, I knew it was going to be over. I knew that sometimes I would cry. I, but I read the scripture. That's why, that's why you got to, if, if you're saved, you got you to gotta read the word. The Bible said, let this word dwell. That means live. Live in you richly because when I began to cry about some circumstances in my life, my heart was broken. Amen. But he said, we being made. Hallelujah. Endure for a night. But he said, but joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Joy comes. I thank God. I thank God that whatever I go through, I know it's not going to last. I know that my God is able, amen, to produce victory in my life. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I'm able to think. But so he says, come. He says, all ye, all, all ye, hallelujah, amen, the labor and are heavy laden. Th those of you that don't have rest, th things are going wrong in your life. Those of you that need a, need a change, those of you that need a breath of fresh air, come unto me. That, that, that's, what he, that's what he told. That's what he told Noah, and that's what he told Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph, and the tri tribe of Israel. Uh, but it did not mean that they would, amen, sail through smoothly. If you follow the track of the Israelites through the wilderness, amen, they were hungry, and the Lord had to provide them quail, quail that they, were, they wanted uh, some food, and he, he, he rained manna down from on high. They were thirsty, and water came out the rock. What, what I'm saying is conditions, amen, inspire, or, or what should I say, energize, or well, let me say a better word, uh, the problems activate God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. My, my, my father, amen, used to get on my nerves, CT, silly, sin killing foster. That's what they called my dad. He was an evangelist. And, and dad would say crazy stuff like, hey, you having a problem? And he'd have a smile on his face. Good. I said, wait a minute. Amen. Who is this man? Who is this? <laughs> Who is this that preaches the word of God? <laughs> he said, good. That's no, it's not. It's not good. Think things are bad. But I understood years later what he was saying. He said, he said, a test, whatever test you have, brings you a testimony. Amen. And you, you can rejoice in God because you're not resting on somebody else's testimony, but you are resting on your own testimony. You, you, you got your own testimony. Said, I was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind. But now I see. Listen, you talk to that Syrophoenician woman. If she, if she could just ride up in here on the SUV, <laughs> amen, amen, just park right here. And, and, she, and I would say, who are you? She said, I'm the Syrophoenician woman, amen. And, and I said, who's out in the car with you? That, that's my daughter. Uh, what's, what, what's wrong? Why are you here? I want you to know I went to this, I went to this man named Jesus and told, told him about my daughter. And, 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 and my daughter, amen, was grievously ill. Amen. There's just demons all over the place. And, and now she's well. Come, come out here. Come out here. Uh, let me get a name. Uh, 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 what, what's these names you guys got? Um, <laughs> I'm trying to get a name. Uh, Saluda. I, that's the best I can do. <laughs> come, <laughs> come out here, Saluda. And Saluda comes out. Amen. And she, she's grinning from ear to ear. I said, hey, Saluda. Your mama say something happened to you. She said, ooh, Bishop, you don't know. I, I, was, I was a mess. And, and, and by the time my mom got home, things had changed. And I wanted to find out uh, who that was uh, that helped me uh, become normal again. See, when, when, you, when God has done something for you, you can't shut your mouth. 
Amen. You cannot tell people, amen, who you are. Amen. Once you find out uh, when you say things like this, when, when, I, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my, my soul, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Oh, my Lord Jesus. Amen. You know, when, when, when I got the Holy Ghost, man, I wanted to tell, I went to Sakai at the time, and I wanted to tell everybody there, hey, I got the Holy Ghost. Man, I was smiling. I got the Holy Ghost on a Sunday, and on Monday morning, I wanted to tell everybody at Sakai, I got the Holy Ghost, man. I was like, things was all changed. You know why? Because God has saved me. And then things kind of went down, and then when it came up, I had another testimony. I said, hey, look what God can do. And when, when it came down, amen, I got married when I was 19. Amen, I had a situation, thought I had cancer. Amen, thought I had sickle cell. Amen, thought things was wrong. And when they looked at me, they said, it's bad. But when they examined further, they said, I don't find any cancer. You know what? I had another testimony. <laughs> Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Amen, when, when I was in an accident over there on uh, uh, El Camino and, and Northgate Avenue, and I was sandwiched between two trucks, and they thought I was dead. Amen, I was like this. But I came back. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Anybody out there came back? People thought you were dead, and now you're alive. Why did I get saved? Well, I know why I got saved. I got saved because he's a burden bearer. <laughs> Amen. He couldn't bear a burden if I didn't have one. Ah, oh, give somebody a high five. Say he's a burden bearer. Uh, if, if he couldn't be a heart fixer if my heart wasn't broken. Look at somebody else. Is he a heart fixer? And Lord have mercy. Those of us that need mind regulation. Oh God, I need this. I need us a mind regulation last week. I need some mind regulation this week. He's a heart fixer and a mind regulator. Amen. He's a rose of Sharon. I'm closing now. <laughs> He's a lily of the valley. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> He's a bright morning star. He's the eternal I am. He's a self-existent one. He's the all-sufficient one. I feel like G.L. Patterson now. Have you tried my Jesus? <laughs> uh, he's all right. <laughs> you need to tell somebody uh, that he's all right. Uh, he woke me up this morning uh, and he started me on my way. Uh, he's all right. Uh, I don't, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, because he said, come unto me. Uh, and I came uh, and he, he answered my prayer. Uh, if he answers your prayer, uh, this is the second door. I'm closing now. My hand is on the knob. But I'm at the door that asks somebody, if you really love Jesus, I want your horn to say, yeah, he's all right. Hallelujah, he is. He's the light of the world. He's the great I am. He's a self-existent one. He's the all-fishing one. He's the almighty. Hey. Why, why, why? Why'd you get saved? I'm going to tell you why. You got saved to worship God. The Lord said, I'm looking for somebody. In the book of John, chapter 4, said, I'm looking for somebody to worship me. I don't need people to just holler my name. I need some, somebody to worship me. And you can't worship God without knowing who he is. So when I came to Jesus... I knew who he was. I knew he was the son of God. I knew he was God in the flesh. I knew he was the one that said to us, go to all the world and preach out, preach all nations. Amen. Advising them, telling them, amen, who I am. Tell them about, amen, the word of God. Go to all nations, teaching all nations baptizing them in the name. And when he said the name of the Father and the name of the Son and the name of the Holy Ghost to those of you that have never been baptized 
in the name of Jesus. I'm closing now. I took my hand off the knob because I got a little bit more to say. When, when he said baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, the Bible says in Colossians, he's given him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I got to go a little further. Wait a minute, Bishop. He said in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. And, and he was talking to his disciples. Amen. And I know they'd, they wouldn't go against Jesus. Well, I told them, I said, hey, walk with me. Walk with me from the book of John, the last book of the old, of the, of the, of the, uh, biographies of Jesus Christ. Uh, walk with me in the book of Acts. Uh, amen. When uh, amen, the Lord had told them to go to Jerusalem uh, and wait until they be endued with power uh, from on high. Uh, and the Bible said uh, they were all in one place uh, with one accord. Uh, amen. 3,000 people uh, filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, to those of you that don't believe uh, that tongues are real, uh, I'm here as a witness uh, to tell you when you get the Holy Ghost, uh, you will speak in tongues uh, as the evidence uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, but he went on to say, uh, I said he went on to say, uh, he said, uh, men and brethren, uh, they asked the pre question to Peter, uh, men and brethren, what shall we do? We heard you talk about Jesus. Uh, and I heard he said, come unto me. Uh, all ye that are laboring and heaven laden uh, and burden, I'll give you rest. Uh, we heard you talking about Jesus, uh, but what we want to know, uh, how do I get saved? Uh, how do I come to him? Uh, Peter said, repent and be baptized uh, in the name of Jesus uh, for the remission of sins, uh, and you shall receive uh, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's the gospel. Uh, amen. When they heard uh, the Lord say, baptize uh, in the name of the Father and of the Son uh, and the Holy Ghost, they knew uh, what that name was. Uh, they were walking with that name uh, for three and a half years uh, when he ascended into heaven. Uh, they knew what that name was. Uh, and there was no doubt in their mind uh, that they would take him down uh, in the name of Jesus uh, because the name of the Lord uh, is a strong tower. Uh, the righteous run into it uh, and are saved. Uh, I'm closing now. Amen. The door is almost closed. Uh, but I came to tell you if you got saved uh, for any other reason uh, than worshiping God, uh, listen, uh, amen, we've got, uh, amen, a foothold. Uh, wait, I got to take that back. Uh, I'm already uh, in heavenly places. Uh, Paul said like this, uh, those of us that are saved, uh, we're down here uh, and up there at the same time. Uh, and the only thing uh, that's holding us back uh, is this earthly tabernacle. Uh, but I I heard somebody else say, uh, it's just about closed now. I heard somebody else say, uh, if this earthly, t earthly tabernacle be dissolved, uh, I got another building, uh, eternal in the heavens, uh, not made by man. Uh, let me encourage y'all. Uh, I, I got to encourage y'all. Uh, amen. Uh, can you hear the door slam? Uh, amen. The door, uh, the door is just about closed. And I heard him say, we shall not all change, all, all die, but we shall be changed in a moment, hallelujah, in a twinkling of an eye. This mortal shall take on immortality, amen. This terrestrial will take on celestial. One of these days, amen, it's all be over. I'm going to sing hallelujah after a while. Why did I get saved? I got saved to go to heaven. Why did I get saved? To go through the stuff of life. Why did I get saved? To have the power of God with me. Why did I get saved? To have the joy of the Lord. Because that's my strength. Why did I get saved? To rejoice. Hallelujah. Evermore. Why? All right. 
like a lunk to lunk. That was the door shut. But don't mess with me because I got the key. I can go back in the door. <laughs> Why did I get saved? So you got to ask yourself that so you don't get so discouraged. Because stuff should not make you leave God. You should get saved because you know who God is. He's the God that brought Israel out of Egypt. He's the God that saved Esther from old vile Haman. He's the same God that even when Jonah disobeyed, prepared a fish for him, that he would be delivered. He's the same God that when Job lost everything, gave him double for his trouble. He's the same God that when David said, this poor, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all this trouble. He, yeah, he, he's the same God. The blind man was crying. He said, Son of David, have mercy on me. He was blind. And the Lord restored his sight. He's the, he's the same man. The, 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 uh, those that had terrible disease. He's the same man that when they needed to pay taxes, he went to the water and said, go to the fish's mouth. There's some, there's some money in the fish's mouth. Some of you in here, you need the coin. And he's going to show you where the fish's mouth is. Hallelujah. Amen. That was, that was for somebody. I don't know who that was for. That was for somebody that needs some coins. If you're discouraged, be encouraged. Lift up your head of your gates. And the king of glory shall come in. Somebody wrote a song, shine on me. Shine on me. The song, love lifted me, love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters lifted me. Safe am I. I want you to come. If, if you're not saved, most of, not all of us in this parking lot, we're saved. Because we accepted the invitation when he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, on you, and learn of me. The yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peace for sure, very deeply staying within. Seeking to rise no more, but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lift, set me now safe. Am I? Hallelujah, love lift, set me. Love lifted me. If you're here, come on. When, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help. Listen, before, before I take my seat, if you're in your car, and maybe you're saved, but you're going through one of the bumps I talked about, marriage, health, money, mind things, if you need one of our ministers to pray for you, just you can either step outside of your car, they'll stand in front of the car and pray for you, but whatever you need right now, come on, let us know you're there. And we'll come to you. You don't have to come up. We'll come to you. Well, if you need something, you want something from God, you want the Lord to get you over a hump, you're going through a test on the way to a testimony, just 
throw your hand out the, out the window stand next to your car so we can see who you are anybody anybody else somebody down there somebody down there somebody over here when when nothing else could help but lift it I love the verse of this I was sinking deep in sin far from the peace for sure very deeply stained within you can still raise your hand seeking to rise no more but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry through up the water lifted me now say and hallelujah hallelujah love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me oh love lifted me love lifted me when nothing I want to address this to those of you that are watching watching this this uh, broadcast or streaming video however you're singing this and I want you to know that the hands of Jesus in Matthew 11 and 28 the same hand he extended then that hand is extended to you he said come this is God in the flesh this is the power of the universe this is the one saying I died and rose again that you might live I'll cast your sins as far as the east is from the west the one that says if you come you have eternal life. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, you're burdened, you're down with stuff, finances, family, relationships, and you're just tired of the pandemics, tired of staying in, tired of wearing a mask. Jesus says, come unto me. He said, I'll give you rest. How do I do that? Well, you just obey the gospel. Jesus said, repentance and remission of sins is the way to be saved. In the book of Acts chapter 2, they opened the door. Peter preached the opening message. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus. Acts, Acts 2, 38. They were already filled. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, and you shall be filled. What does it mean to be filled? It means to be able to go through life, go through the downs and ups, the ins and outs, and still tightly holding on to the hand of Jesus Christ because he already told me I'll never leave you nor forsake you Lo, I'm with you always and if you're out there and you haven't committed your life to the Lord pray with me now Father every viewer that's looking at this broadcast this, this simulcast touch them Lord give them exactly what they need let them experience your love for you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, Jesus, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but everlasting life. Father, I claim every one of them that said they wanted to come. And I received them vicariously. And Lord, as they approach the throne of grace, I say it's done. In Jesus' name. God bless you. I also want to say to you that next Sunday, October 4th, we begin our, our campaign, 40 Days in the Word. 40 Days in the Word. Every Bible class, every sermon is going to be centered on the Word of God. Uh, Wednesday night, 
Sunday and seven days a week. Our, the workbooks are here, and the workbooks are $10, and it allows you to follow us. It has exercises, how to study. If you want one of those books, you can uh, leave a message on the, on the website, or you can call us, or you can uh, email us, whatever, whatever works, because we're there for you. We're there for you. I want you to know that God has blessed us. And for all of you here, uh, the workbooks are here for the 40 Days in the Word. If you want a book, you can see Sister Helen in the back there. You can buy your book today. Uh, if we run out, we'll order some more. You, you want to get this book. This, this is a book that will help you not only during the 40 days, but will help you beyond and beyond. Amen. God loves you. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give God some praise. Give, God some praise. <clears throat> Give the bishop some praise. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. Yes, we thank the Lord. We thank God for that fresh word today. We just thank God for using our pastor in such a time as this. Also, the furtherance of the book that Bishop is talking about, Sister Hulan is out there with the books. Those who have already ordered your book, they may be already on the table there. So she needs you to stop by the table and pick those books up. And again, like Bishop said, she will take your name down if you need books as well. Give God a praise for the young man that walked through the gate. His name is Dennis. He just so happened to be walking by, and he came by, and he listened to the whole service quietly there in the parking lot. So, Dennis, we appreciate you. Continue to come back and worship with us anytime. Amen and amen. Anybody else need prayer out there? Is there anybody that we miss? Just raise your hand. If there's anyone else that need prayer, before we close, we will come to your car. And we will pray for you. Just let us know what you need. Also, just want to mention that we've been in prayer Monday, Wednesdays, and Sunday, 6 a.m. The prayer line is open to all that wants to join the prayer line. Monday morning, morning dew with Evangelist Howard. Wednesday, 6 a.m. with myself and the prayer partners. And also Sunday, 6 a.m. with the prayer partners. So the prayer line is open three days this week. Anyone need prayer, feel free to join that prayer line. If you have any prayer requests, just let us know and we will pray over those prayer topics anytime, Monday, Wednesdays, and Sunday for your Also, don't forget when Bible class, 7.30, with our own Bishop Pastor Foster. Can somebody give God a praise? Come on, give God some praise. Give God some praise. Give God some glory. Give him some glory. Yes, give him some glory. God is good, y'all. I don't know about you guys, but God is so good. We have a good God. We have a God that's, that sits high, looks low. Look at his children. He knows when we need something. All we have to do is just open up our mouth and God will fill it for us. I don't know about you guys, but I'm enjoying the Lord right now. In my young youth right now, I am really enjoying, enjoy being with the Lord. Yes.
want to also open the doors to the church. If there's anybody that need a church home, feel free to talk to any of the minister here at the church. We'd be glad to give you all the information that you need to know about Greater Grace here, about our pastor, our first lady. We serve a good church here, y'all. We have a teacher, a preacher that teaches the word of God. And I implore any one of you that looking for a church home, you are invited. You are welcome. In Jesus' name, amen. I can search the earth below, but there's no one. one more praise as I close us out. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you came and visit us today, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the preached word, Heavenly Father, Lord, that we heard, Heavenly Father, Lord. Let us, Lord, leave this place without your presence, Heavenly Father, Lord. Let us supply every word, Lord, that we heard today in our daily walk, Heavenly Father, Lord. Lord, now be with us throughout the week, Heavenly Father, Lord. 
Let us encourage ourselves, Lord. Wherever we go, Lord, let us be a light, Heavenly Father, Lord, to the world, Lord. When they see us, Lord, they see you walking, Lord. Heal those, Lord. Deliver those, y'all. Set free. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. God bless you all. This is one of my favorite church songs growing up as a little kid. So we're gonna sing it for you right now. We've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting in His holy word. Cause He's never failed me yet. So I cried, oh, 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 can't turn around. We come this far. Sing it. 